Okay, are you guys ready? Um, I'm uh, Howard Hawk, and today is the 31st of January, <laughs> and we are going to talk about matter. It matters. Okay, Should I write minutes in your Oh, uh, no, no, that's okay. You don't need to do that. This is, I would write matter at the top. That's all right. Uh, let's make that a little bigger. M A T T E R R. Um, matter is basically everything. Almost everything. Everything with. We've talked about this before. Mass and volume. <coughs> Everything with mass and volume, whether that be a little puff of air, or a tree, or a coin, or anything, basically, that either weighs something or takes up space. And that's matter. That's, that's basically the biggest category of substances, the uh, biggest category of stuff that there is, the only thing that's not included in this definition is energy. Which, the, the sun isn't all energy, it's, it puts out a lot of energy, but uh, the point is, matter is, is everything with mass and volume, and energy is everything else. If it's not matter or energy, I don't know what it is. It's, uh, it's something that you're not studying. Okay, so the, um, the classification of matter is really what we're doing, and matter divides neatly into two, excluding energy, let me redraw that so you don't think I'm pointing to energy there. there. Matter divides into two things, two types of matter. The two most general kinds of matter are. Uh, does anybody remember this? Is this actually goes back to when you had physical science? If you had physical science here, there's really two basic kinds of matter. And I'll throw it out there. If anybody has an idea of what those might be, I'd be happy to hear about it. No. Um, <clears throat> You can divide the whole world, the whole universe, really, of stuff into two kinds of stuff. And the kinds of stuff are um, substances. And by substances, put a little parenthesis here, what we really mean by that is pure substances. Substances and mixtures. Mixtures and substances, substances and mixtures. And <clears throat> excuse me. And what? Do you, how can you say uh, substances was a big theme of IPS versus mixtures? Substances have what we call constant composition. Constant composition. They're the same throughout. So if I have a collection of a substance, it's the same no matter what part of that substance you look in. Um, <clears throat> And there aren't that many pure substances in the world. Well, there's a lot of pure substances in the world. The world is mostly made of mixtures, but um, there are pure substances, and there's two kinds. Well, two kinds. Uh, can anybody dredge up what those <coughs> might be? And you, and you can. You've, you've thought, you've had these words before, I'm almost sure, so I'm going to... 
put you on the spot a little bit and see if you can come up with. What kinds of substances are the same all the way through? They're, they're not like a mixture of different things. They're, they're constant compositions. So you take from the first bit to the last, always the same. Dirt. Dirt? No, nah, dirt's a mixture because dirt's got a bunch of different stuff in it. Water. Water is, water is, is a type of pure substance, yes. Uh, one of these two, but, but, the, but it, water isn't an answer. It's a, it's a, type, a type of substance. I'll give you a hint. Liquid and solid? No, that's a good guess too, but um, we're talking about like water is a pure substance because it's H2O. Um, uh, another, another kind, CO2, uh, NH3 is, is one. The, yeah. Is it chemicals and non no, everything's sort of a chemical, but, um, but, but yeah, these are chemical what? Chem what do we call them? Chemical what? They're, there's a word that we would apply to these. I'm going to write it here. Combos. Close! Combinations. Com... Pound. Pounds, yes, compounds. Compounds is one. Elements is the other. <clears throat> Now, elements are the most basic type of matter that still has properties of, of matter. Um, the table over there, the periodic table of the elements. <coughs> Let's have a look over there, shall we? There we go. Periodic table of the elements. <coughs> Everything from... Where are we here? Copper, Cu, silver, Ag, gold, Au, iron, Fe, helium, way up there, <coughs> uranium, right here. Those are all com those are all not compounds. Those are all elements. They're the building blocks of of compounds. Compounds are made from elements. But elements, what what they have, what what they are is um, all made of one kind of atom. So any one element, like gold, it, gold, the element gold is all composed of one type of atom. Meaning if I had a collection of gold, all the atoms in that collection are exactly the same kind of atom. Gold atoms, one particular kind of atom, whereas collection of arsenic or hydrogen, helium or neon, all the atoms of those are going to be the same too. What's to say after all? All composed, sorry, composed of one T Y P E, one type of atom. I know I write like a left-handed monkey. <laughs> Yeah, right. One type of atom. And, and uh, I actually have my little element <laughs> kit here that I'll give you. Um, <coughs> this kit is, uh, is little jars and bottles of uh, one particular kind of element. Like, this is carbon, zinc, uh, magnesium, mm -hmm. Germanium, chromium. The, the point is, all of them are different, and um, the you can. I'm going to pass this around, and you guys can look at them. These glass ones here. These are ampules. Notice there's one missing, and that's mercury because uh, mercury is uh, not allowed in the school environment uh, in any form, and so we got rid of this. Years ago, and, but the, these ampules all have slightly more harmful things, so please be very careful with them. Phosphorus, not so bad, except it ignites really easily. Um, iodine also would turn into a gas spontaneously if it were let out of this ampule, or at least it could. And when it did that, uh, it would be a lot like chlorine gas, like mustard gas, bad stuff. Um, same with this, bromine, nope. That's arsenic. Definitely be careful with the arsenic. Bromine water. If this were to break, 
which it's not going to because you're going to be really careful, we will all get up and leave at the same time because it would make sort of a really choking type vapor. It wouldn't kill us all. This is a relatively small amount. But it would be enough to make everybody in this room cough for probably the next two or three hours um, and need medical attention and we don't want that. So, and, and please, I don't care if you have enemies in this room, please do not try to take them out with the bromine water. Thank you. But don't they use that to like yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, right, same with chlorine in your pool. They use chlorine to clean pools, they use bromine to clean pools uh, and, and hot tubs and things like that. But that's in a salt form, in a solid form. If you were to actually have pure chlorine gas or bromine gas, that's, that was used as a weapon in World War I. Um, you don't want to do that. Um, okay, anyway, I'm going to pass this around. Just be, be careful with it. Don't. Decided it would be fun to have it on because it wouldn't. You can just you can just pass it on. Pass it on. <clears throat> or you can just pass it on. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so, so those are elements. <clears throat> the point is, all composed of one type of atom, like a gold bar. Gold bar, pure gold. But, I mean, there's a little bit of stuff mixed in with gold, actually, but let's just pretend it's pure gold. If you looked at a gold bar anywhere in there, all you'd see was atoms that were gold atoms. Uh, compounds, on the other hand, as you can see, are a little different. Each of these letters is a symbol for a different element, and when you have a compound, you have more than one element, um, or at least you have more than one atom. You have two or more atoms, and they're not mixed together. They're actually they're attached to each other. I can't just pull them apart, and we call that chemically combined. And the last thing is, H2O is the only way that you can put those two together and make water, and that's two <coughs> hydrogens and one oxygen. If you make something else, like H2O2, that's not water anymore. That's uh, hydrogen peroxide, the stuff in the brown bottle. Um, carbon dioxide, CO2, two oxygens per carbon. That's the only way you get carbon dioxide uh, with its properties. If you had carbon and one oxygen, that's carbon monoxide. That's the stuff that it will get you if you're uh, not careful about where you put your uh, generator or if you decide to heat your house with your oven or if you decide to heat your house with a gasoline generator inside your house uh, or, you know, all those little permutations that we always end up reading about in the paper after it's too late. Um, anyway, two or more atoms chemically combined in a definite ratio. Which again means like two hydrogens to one instead of two to two, one to two instead of one to one, that kind of thing. That makes a chemical compound. If it has a different ratio, it's a different compound. Compounds always have the same ratio, and they're chemically combined. <clears throat> like I can have hydrogen and oxygen mixed together, bless you. Now I could have a balloon full of hydrogen, and I could hook it up to a nozzle and put some oxygen in there, and I would have hydrogen and oxygen as a mixture. But if I gave that a spark and turned that into water, then they're chemically combined. Then you can't get them apart without some other sort of chemical or electricity being passed through them to separate them. So that's, that's what a chemical uh, compound is. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have to say about compounds. Yep. Okay. Any questions about that? I'll move over to the other side of the board here and write some more things. <clears throat> Okay, so mixtures basically is when you have two or more pure substances combined physically. Um, so two or more substances physically <coughs> combined. Like Salt and pepper, <coughs> beans and rice, uh, Red Sox fans and Yankees fans, like they would ever mix. Ugh. Anyway, just kidding. Uh, physically combined, nuts and bolts. I can separate nuts and bolts. I can separate salt and pepper if I'm smart enough. Uh, 
that's different from chemically combined um, because they can also be in different ratios. Like I can have sugar dissolved in water. That's a that's a mixture. I can put as much sugar as I want to in there. There's not like a definite ratio of sugar to water or anything like that. Okay, let's move through this. There's there's two different kinds of mixtures. He uses another vocab word. At which point we'll be. Um, most of the way done, except for the pre-lab. There's homogeneous mixtures, or homogeneous, <coughs> and there's heterogeneous. Like you might expect, homogeneous means <coughs> same throughout. Um, whereas uh, heter heterogeneous are not the same throughout. Um, let's see. Here, go ahead and write, write that down. That'll give you some stuff to write under each of those. Sugar water is a mixture. Um, it's sugar dissolved in water. This is my clumsy attempt at making little pretend sugar molecules dissolved in water. The thing is that when you have a homogeneous mixture, also which by the way is also known as a solution, It's the same all the way through. There's only one phase. There's the watery phase with sugar dissolved in it. <clears throat> and it's going to be the same here, as it is here, as it is here, as it is here. It's always the same <coughs> anywhere in the mixture. But let's do another example. Uh, iced tea. Iced tea. Um, in iced tea, you got two different phases. You got your tea phase. Which tea is basically a solution, by the way. Uh, you put a tea bag into water and it dissolves certain substances. But so you got your tea phase. And you got your ice phase. And a phase is basically just any separate part that's divided off from some other part. It's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, complex word for a simple idea. Just when you have something different. Uh, <clears throat> you know, like uh, a pizza has the cheese phase, the crust phase, the pepperoni phase. Um, and then so, so it's not like that huge of a concept. Uh, uh, 
chocolate sundae has the ice cream phase, the syrup phase, etc. Any anytime you have different things that have a a, a definite division between them, like because you're either you're either in the ice cube or you're in the iced tea. You know, there's 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 the ice phase, and you're in the ice phase, and it's cold, frozen water, and then next thing you know, bam, you're in the iced tea phase. That's a different phase. That's the uh, the the brown liquid, uh, and you know, if you're in one, you're not in the other. If you're in the other, you're not in the first. So that's that's what a phase is. So any kind of mixture, I know, how complicated do you think that we can make the idea of just two mixed things? Well, science is pretty good at making simple ideas complex, but that's the sciencey way of describing two different kinds of mixtures. And that's <clears throat> what we're going to talk about when we come back from uh, having a little break because uh, you guys probably need to rest your hands and I need to rest my throat. And uh, we'll call it a five. Okay, guys, let's uh, let's continue. There are. Um, <clears throat> I want to. I'm going to erase this side because I want to continue with a little bit of detail about these two types of solutions. So if you have room or a mixture, so if you have room under what you wrote, that's fine. If you don't, <clears throat> then start a little section. But. Um, <clears throat> the um, the mixtures, excuse me, the two types of mixtures that we talked about can be broken into a little more detail. <clears throat> Homogenous, not so much. Homogenous mixture is always just a solution. And, but the difference between them, I'm going to tell you in just a second, has to do with the size of the particles. So depending on what's dissolved or mixed with, uh, mixed in here, in these mixtures, God, I'm stumbling over my own words, um, it's going to make it a different kind of mixture. So uh, a, homo a homogeneous solution has the smallest particles <clears throat> in fact the particles are single atoms or molecules small as it gets they are, they, <clears throat> specifically, the particle size is less than 10 to the negative 7th centimeters. That's pretty small, so what's that? 0 0.0000001 centimeters. That's pretty small. And so, um, oops, another thing, because they're so small, they're going to stay dissolved. Like, this is a solution with uh, blue food coloring, but the, the food coloring dissolves, and it's totally uniform. It's the same all the way throughout. It doesn't have, like, patches of dark blue and light blue and splotches. It's, it's the same all the way through. And because they're so small, they never settle out. So, so this will stay. If I left this in here for a thousand years, assuming it didn't evaporate or something else didn't happen to it, it's not like we would come in eventually and it would be like half water and half blue. It would all, it's always going to stay that way. <coughs> because the, the particles just aren't small enough to, to settle out. You see that okay? I see you guys struggling here. <laughs> Less than 10 to the negative 7 centimeters. That's, that's what you have to know there. Uh, they never settle out, and they can't, I'll move again in a second, they can't be filtered. They can't be filtered out. So you can, you can try to filter a solution uh, a million times, and it's just not going to filter out. <clears throat> 
finishing that. So that's your homogeneous mixture or a solution. <clears throat> um, the other kind, this, this is the last two categories. The other kind, uh, if we if we break down our heterogeneous mixtures, you get two kinds. You get a colloid and a suspension. And I'm going to tell you right now what's the difference between them. seem very big, but it's big enough that the particles won't stay suspended. They won't stay up in there. And this, this would be something like um, muddy water. Like, if you shake up muddy water, it's going to look pretty uniform if you shake it up. But then after it settles a little bit, you'll end up with <clears throat> sort of a kind of clear part, and a kind of murky part, and you'll end up with a bunch of stuff settled on the bottom. That's what makes it a suspension. Um, particles settle out. Uh, particles can be filtered. And they're bigger than 10 to the negative fifth. So they're, they're 100 or more times bigger than the particles in a solution. Go ahead, write, write it down. I'm not in a rush here. I, uh, I saved this one for last because it's kind of in the middle. The, the particles are between, well, they're between. So they're, they're greater than 10 to the negative 7th and less than 10 to the negative 5th. I don't know if I wrote that right. I don't know how you make those mathematical statements anymore, greater than, less than, in between. I never could figure that out, honestly. Um, <clears throat> But they're greater than this and smaller than this. And so they're like medium. They're the mama bear particles. Um, and what does that mean? Well, it means that they also are going to stay up. They're pretty uniform.
they also won't settle. They can't be filtered, but they do. <coughs> they catch light. And that's. I'm going to talk. The, the last thing we have to do is kind of a pre lab, which <coughs> is mostly just this information, except for one more test that I'm going to show you guys that helps us tell the difference. So. Go ahead and get that down, then we'll do our pre-lab, and, uh, and then we're on the downward slope to being done. Don't worry. Not that much more. Ooh, that's cold coffee. So I'm going to So what's going to happen in the mixtures lab is you're going to get three or four different beakers and you're going to put them through. Yes, ma'am. Is this going to be in the lab section of the notebook? Uh, no, this can still be notes. This is this is notes. This is three lab notes. One of them will, at least one of them will be a solution. Another one of them will be a colloid or more. And at least one of them will be a suspension. And you're going to test three things. Clarity. In other words, well, how clear is it? You're going to test uh, whether it settles out. <clears throat> and then the last thing you're going to do is a laser test. So, based on the properties that we've done here, at least two of these, you should be able to figure out what's going to happen. Um, oh, there's the river. <clears throat> Alright, and so I give you three, three mixtures. One of them is a solution. If we look at it, is it going to be, basically your choices are clear or cloudy. Uh, which is a solution going to be? Clear, right. Solutions are clear. Now, that doesn't mean transparent, doesn't mean totally color free. This is this is a solution. It's clear. Even though there's color, you can still see very precise lines through it. Even I mean, you know. Okay, if it wasn't a round triangular container, I could actually see you guys. I can't, but I can see enough through this to know. That this is clear. This is certainly clear. Sugar dissolved in water is clear. 
that's not, there's no sugar in here. Anyway. <coughs> okay, uh, and, and a colloid is going to be cloudy. And a suspension is going to be cloudy. So if you get a beaker and it's cloudy, then you know it's one of these two. If it's clear, you can be pretty sure it's this. Although, colloids can look kind of clear too. So that one test isn't really enough. But then you're going to look at whether particles settle out. You're going to take it and you're going to shake your beaker and you're going to see if any stuff comes up or once, once you get it, I'll give it to you pretty stirred up and you're going to see if particles settle out and you know gather on the bottom. Um, a suspension um, will be a yes. Mostly we're looking at yes and no answers to this. And the other two are going to be no, because particles don't settle out of either a solution or a colloid. So pretty much each of these tests only narrows it down to like two others. You know what I mean? So if, it's, if there's no particles settling out, then it could be one of these two. If there are particles, then it's definitely this. So they, they, it's like a, you have to have more than one of these combined to get a real answer. The last one is the laser test. You're going to get uh, a laser, just like you know one of these lasers here. Oh, now you're not going to work for me. No, really? Not until I look into it, right? Okay. Okay, well, you're going to get a laser that works. And um, what you're going to do is you're going to shine that laser going to shine it into the beaker. And what's going to happen is, I cannot believe that this thing really can't work. It worked last while. Nope. Okay, when you shine a laser into a solution, whether it's something like this that's, that's got color, or whether it's this, Basically, the particles are so small that there's nothing to catch the light. So the light is going to go clear through until it comes out the other side. It'll come out the other side, but you will not see anything in that beaker. Because you don't see a laser unless there's something for it to reflect off of. Like when you go see a laser show, they put fog in the air to give the light something to reflect off of. If it's just a totally clear, dry night, you won't see the lasers at all. It's a pretty crappy laser show. Um, so, uh, a solution is going to be totally clear when you shine the, the laser through it. So, uh, no visible light. <clears throat> and the suspension is going to be the opposite. Um, eventually, I'm going to carry this through all of these, but here's the, uh, here's the suspension. The particles in a suspension are so big big are they? They're so big that the light doesn't just catch them, the light is diffused by them. And so when this laser hits this one, it'll bounce a little thin stream of light in a bunch of different directions um, off of here, and that will eventually spread the light throughout the beaker, making kind of like a swirly sort of uh, fog-like kind of thing. Like you see, like what a what a light looks like in the in the fog, like a, a headlight or a house light. It's like you can see it, but it's like got all this it's not like a, a straight line of light, it's like a cloudy, foggy sort of mishmash of light. Um, that's that's what a suspension will look like as the light shines off of it. And then there's only one more. And this is the, the last thing. When you, when you shine the laser through a colloid, the particles are big enough that the light will be caught by them, but they're not really big enough to like redirect the light. So what happens is when you shine 
a laser through a colloid, you get this kind of sort of ghostly beam of light. It's very straight, but you can see it. It's kind of faint. Um, and this is called something very specific. It's called the Tyndall effect. T-Y-N-D-A-L-L -L effect. <clears throat> And that's when you have sort of a ghostly beam of light. Ghostly beam of light. Um, and, uh, which I was going to show you using this laser, but now the laser doesn't work. So I'm going to show that to you. solution. Again, when I put this in here, um, does it come out? No, not so much. This thing's gotten really weak. It's actually about to die on me. But nothing, you can't see anything in there. I'm going to go right to the uh, colloid. This should work as a colloid. If I shine the, oops, <laughs> there's the, uh, if I shine that in there, do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. the, there's like a really straight beam that's visible through there. That's the Tyndall effect. Tyndall effect. Um, when it makes that really ghostly, but but definitely straight and non-diffused beam. Um, if you shine it into a suspension, eh, this doesn't work very well. It's not bright enough. But what you see is what you would see is more of a, a spread out kind of murky glow instead of this nice straight beam that you get with the Tyndall effect. So okay. That's, that's what we're going to be doing. The lab is on page 25 and 26. You might want to read it. <clears throat> um, and that is all. Let me shut this off. Uh,